One of the best parts about using a Hasselblad is the waist level finder. I've used a number of different waist level finders on other cameras and this is by far the nicest, brightest viewfinder to look through. A few weeks ago, I set up my camera to give you a POV perspective of what it looks like to shoot through the viewfinder of my Hasselblad 503CX. And in this week's video, I wanted to go step by step and take you through the process of how to build your own POV rig. I'll also talk about a few things that I learned using this rig and a few tips that can help you out when you build yours. I chose to build this rig in this particular way for a few reasons. I did see a few methods online of how to build your own rig, but I didn't really want a janky Home Depot rig. There was another video I did manage to find on YouTube, but it used quite a lot more parts, which was number one, a little bit more expensive, and number two, just more complicated to build. So I just wanted this simple and relatively cheap. I do shoot video obviously, and these parts can also be used for rigging up the camera in different ways, not just for this POV rig. I also wanted the rig to be relatively quick to use, meaning that you can mount and dismount the cameras using quick release plates. And it just makes it a whole lot easier than having to screw in the cameras by hand. So I'll go through the list of all the parts you need to build this rig and I'll make sure to list all the parts in the description below. First, we're going to need a two pack of 15 millimeter rail block rod clamps, two 15 millimeter rods, 30 centimeters or 12 inches long. You can go longer if you like, depending on the camera that you'll be using. At least one articulating magic arm or friction arm. A second one is optional. A long cheese plate. The one I'm using is 155 millimeters long one Arca Swiss tripod plate, a second one is optional, and one quick release Arca Swiss plate, a second one is also optional as well. So to start, we're gonna grab our rod clamps and our rods, and we're just gonna insert these and tighten them down. There's one on each side. And you want to get it pretty close to the same height like that. You can always adjust it later on. We're going to add the clamp to the other side as well. So this is what you should have to begin with. So I use the long cheese plate. And I use a Arca Swiss plate on the bottom. That way I can mount it to a tripod very easily. So I'm just gonna mount this on the middle of the cheese plate. So I'm gonna pick somewhere around there. And right now it's just finger tight, but we're gonna go back and use the multi-tool just to tighten it down even further, just to make sure everything's solid. But that's the next part there. So next we're gonna connect our rods and our rod clamps to the cheese plate. It's pretty simple. Just gonna line it up. We're gonna use our quarter 20 threads or quarter 20 screws. There's two holes in the bottom, two screw holes. So these aren't threaded. There are threaded ones as well, but we're gonna use the ones that are not threaded and then the screws just go all the way through. And there's, those are gonna screw right into the cheese plate. So to start, we can get it finger tight just to make sure it's on there and take our multi-tool. Tighten that down. And here's what it should look like now. Next, we're going to mount our quick release plate. So flipping it to the bottom of the rig here, we're gonna mount it in this section. This has like a little recessed area where you can actually put the screw through. So the screw will actually seat in that hole there. And 
And there we go. We have our quick release plate there where we can mount our camera. The next step, this is what we will use to mount our video camera onto the rig. This is one of those small rig, um, I think they're like a magic arm or a friction arm or something like that. At the top of our rod clamp, there's different various threaded holes and we are just going to thread the magic arm into one of those threads. Once you have that on, we can now use the magic arm to position our camera at the top in any way we want. So we can make adjustments to make sure that our camera is facing down towards the viewfinder. So that's our rig there. The plan with this other magic arm is to mount this on the top and then have a black flag on top of the rig. And the whole idea with that is to help reduce any reflections that might happen. You'll see in some of the footage, there's a little bit of reflection of the camera itself. Other times you might get a reflection of the sky. So it's just to try and help reduce that reflection. So you'll see in the video, there's some clips that you can see the camera's reflection. There's others where it's just kind of more of like a black square. It didn't work perfect, but it did help reduce the reflection where you can actually see the camera logo. And all you have to do to attach this is just to thread it into one of the threaded holes in the rod clamp. As long as it's not hitting the other side there, you should be good. While using this rig, it can make it a little bit tricky to compose your image or use the viewfinder on your camera. Even if you are using a camera with a tilt screen, I'm using the Fuji X-T5 and that has a tilt screen so you can kind of see what you're shooting, but it's a little bit harder because there's the rig poles in the way, there's the magic arm that's in the way. Overall, it just kind of feels really bulky to use. So it does make it a little bit more tricky to use, especially if you're not used to using a waist level finder where the image is reversed. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Focusing using this rig is more difficult as well. So my biggest tip here is to just use zone focusing. If you can use lots of available light and shoot at F8 or higher and zone focus to infinity, it's just so hard because you're not able to use the flip out magnifier on the waist level finder on the Hasselblad. So quick tip there, use zone focusing. I did find the best way to use this rig is handheld. I did use it on a tripod and I find because of the height and the weight of it, it does make it a little bit shaky. I hope this video was helpful. If you build your own POV rig or already have one that you've built, I'd love to see what you shoot with it. Feel free to send me an email or DM me at Cam Ng. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.